There was a guy named Robert. Robert worked for a large national retail chain, and he was assigned to be the manager of the worst performing store in the country. Great assignment, right? Robert knew that things were going to have to change, that he was going to have to do something different. And so he bought every single employee a whistle, and he gave them one instruction. Anytime you see something going right, blow the whistle. And so they did. If somebody helped a customer, they blew the whistle. If somebody did their job, they blew the whistle. If somebody solved a problem, they blew the whistle. And it was absolute chaos. Whistle bursts all over the place. It was loud. It was crazy. And everybody loved it. The employees, the customers, everybody, as soon as the whistle went off, would look around and figure out what was going right. And the performance of the store started to improve. Some of his fellow managers in his district took notice. And so they came to him and they said, what are you doing, man? What's, what's the difference? And so he told them about the whistle. And they did the same thing. They bought a whistle for every employee and they gave him the instruction. And, and it sort of worked. Not really, but a little bit. But by that point, Robert's store had continued to improve and he had become one of the top performing stores in the country. And so they came up with a corporate whistle program. Supervisors got red whistles, store managers got green whistles, employees got blue whistles, and there was a list of the 10 things you had to blow the whistle for and the 14 things you could never blow a whistle for, and the whole program just kind of died. When I talk about storytelling, I try and be really careful that it doesn't become a corporate whistle program. Now, there are elements of stories, and there are micro-stories, and we're going to start those tomorrow. And they've been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. So I can't really improve on those. But the secret, the almost dirty little secret about innovation, about doing anything different, about changing things, is that there has to be an element of your own personal tweak, your own personal taste or touch to it. And so you're going to learn about the elements of story. And I'm going to try and do my best to give you examples of times that they work and times that they don't and ways to think about them maybe as a salesperson or as a marketer or as somebody interviewing for new jobs. But you have to remember that you have to take it and make it your own. Because when they were blowing the whistles to communicate something, it worked. But as soon as they started blowing the whistles just for the whistleblowing's sake, it stopped. Storytelling is the same way. If you're telling a story to communicate, if you're telling a story to persuade, it'll work. But if you're doing it just to be a storyteller, it falls apart really quickly. It becomes the corporate whistle program at that point. So tomorrow I'm going to tell you about the first element of the story structure. And I think you're going to learn something. I think it'll be new to you. I think a lot of it is going to probably be familiar with stories that you've heard. But I want you to remember to keep it your own. Don't just blow the whistle. Don't just tell the story for storytelling's sake. Make it personal, and it'll work.